Welcome to Generic Scale Models. I'm Jason, your host, and today we're going to be doing a tool review of um, some Proxon mini machines, a mill, a drill press, and a sander. We're going to take a look at these things. I've used some of them. Some of them are new and I haven't got to them yet, but I want to talk about them anyways. Um, this is uh, back to model making content. I've been doing a lot of game stuff, so I'm going to start doing uh, Model Mondays. So I'm going to start bringing back in some model making content for you guys um, to enjoy. So let's get to the overhead camera here. Here is what we have. We have a mini mill. This is the Proxon MF70. We have the mini drill press. This is the Proxon TBM115. And then we have a Proxon mini 5 inch disc sander. That is model TG. 125 slash E. So these are um, high quality uh, machines. These are not like what you would get with a Dremel drill press or a Dremel machine that is inaccurate and not very not very accurate basically. With um, the Proxon mini mill here you have uh, different variable speeds. You have between, uh, I believe it's between uh, 5,000 RPMs and 20,000 RPMs. You have a little dial switch here on the side, and then you have your power switch here, and then you have um, some recommended feeds and speeds for steel, cast iron, aluminum, and brass. But I, I mainly use this for plastic, hollowing out doors on frames and things like that. And then also it has a micro adjust table, so. You can make very precise micro movements with this. It does a fantastic job. It is in millimeters, so you know, 0.2 millimeters. You go back 0.2 millimeters. Um, same on this side. It doesn't have a fast travel table, and it has little locking screws. You can see there's a little bit of play in my table, but I can adjust these locking screws here. There's little little locking screws here. Use a little Allen wrench that comes with it. To lock that play down so it doesn't um, doesn't mess with your work now there's different ways to lock things down on this table I have just an assortment of you know step blocks with um, the hold down hold down bars that would go in there and hold it down or you can use a little vise like so you can get the little Proxon vise that comes with it. And then you can also use something as a temporary fixturing tool. And that is what I use is polyplastic. It is, it's a moldable plastic pellets. You heat this up in, um, I believe it's 100, 105, 150 degree water. And it becomes a moldable plastic. And I normally mold it to where I can put it, put these on it and lock it down. And then I can, you know, mold it to hold my plastic parts. I can mold it to hold my plastic parts perfectly. And then I can hold it down and be able to do the work I need to do. A lot of different options for that. And I'm going to do um, a more in depth thing on making fixtures and stuff with the poly pellets and also. Um, casting some um, molds and things like that um, some like mold blocks that you would use all the time that would just like slide in and lock down that have screws built in or nuts built into them and things like that but as for tools that I use on the mill um, I mainly use um, end mills for this and I'll show you right here uh, I use these um, speed tiger um, speed tiger they're um, they're carbide, carbide end mills, and they're, they're, they're good. They're not like high quality like a GAR or a Healy coil or, or, or things like that. And I have a couple different size. This is a, this is a four flute uh, 16th inch end mill here. So this is uh, four flute um, 16th by 3 16th. So it's got an eighth inch shank, so it fits in my collet. And then that's that one. And I also have a 16th that has a ball nose on it. So that comes in handy 
when you want to make a radius to reduce a stress joint so it's not a sharp edge you could do a ball nose joint there you can see how tiny this is compared to a dime that's the 1 16th inch and then I have a eighth inch that I use it's, it's a little big but it does work for taking out more material if I'm doing doors on a 350 ship to you know have open doors and things like that I'll use a 16th um, and then I also have a 332nd set um, works pretty good it's actually the about the exact slot width of a door but I like the 16th with a little bit of play and I just you know take two passes at it so that's my four common um, speed tiger bits I use you can get those on Amazon they're not very expensive and they're carbide you know you can even do some metal work with them if you choose and as for drill bits I use these um, PC board drills um, for drilling out um, like PC boards so that's what these are for uh, these go from 0.3 millimeter to 1.2 millimeter you can buy these in you can buy these I think I caught a five pack and it was like 20 something bucks they do break um, I find that drilling in the mill or in the drill press with a piece locked down uh, with no no movement or no sway they, they tend to last a little longer and they won't um, break as often on you now as it comes with the the mill it normally comes with collets I don't use the collets as you can see they're still taped up I have a um, speed chuck on here that you just unscrew you thread it off it's kinda like a speed chuck like a keyless chuck for um, a Dremel but it does not the same thread so you have to get a special one from Proxon so that works great you know I mainly use eighth inch so I could use the collets but you know it's nice if you have to use something else because um, I was an engineer at a machine shop so I have I have a wide variety of different tools of different sizes that I use on special occasions so sometimes I need to change very quickly to something else um, and things like that so that's the mill and I have one more attachment for the mill that I got that uh, I'm real excited about. I haven't had an opportunity to use it yet, but I feel that it's going to come in useful on some 3D printing projects I need to do some alignment holes on, and it is a dividing collet. Um, it is this right here, um, and as you can see, it is a, you can spin it, you you know you, you loosen it up I haven't had the opportunity to use this yet but you loosen up the the collet you put it in there and then you have it on the mill and you can drill holes in a concentric circle for you know a design or for mounting fixtures and things like that on a circular object so um, I've used these um, bigger ones of these on mill machines and things like that on many numerous occasions and I saw this it was a good price on Amazon so I picked one up for my mini mill I'm assuming it will come in useful because most of my stuff does moving on to the 5 inch disc sander I got this to sand the the um, base edges off my custom sanding sticks like this one that I print that are going to be available on eBay soon um, I can use this to sand off the rough edges and clean up the thumb screws so they're not as rough to handle. It's nice. Um, it has a fully adjustable table. I normally use a square to square it up, like or a one, two, three block, like one, two, three block like this to make sure that I'm perfectly square. So get that nice and square there. Now I know I have a 90 degree angle, or I could put a little little bevel on it by adjusting that angle back. It's got a nice smooth table. It doesn't rock too much. It, these tools are extremely high quality. It even has a dust extractor where you can hook a vacuum up to. So that's going to be interesting. It's adjustable speed control. It's got a cover over the button so it doesn't get a lot of dust in there. 
So, I plan on sanding a bunch of resin, so I'll be using this outside. That's why I haven't used it yet. I've been waiting for things to go outside, but you know, with everything going on, I'll probably be doing a lot of work outside on this. Just got to get some work cleaned up on the back porch. So, then we have the drill press. Uh, you really don't, if you have the mill, you maybe probably don't need the drill press, but the drill press comes in handy because you could just quickly pop holes in by by lowering it. Um, this, you, I couldn't find a quick change a keyless collet a chuck for this one because it's different threads than that's on the mill. So I am just using the collets on this. I haven't had a whole lot of use for this. Uh, I'm using one of their micro tables. Um, so I added this to it. Um, it took a little bit of work to line it up, make sure it's square. I like the precision of it, and I can also, like I said, make my own custom fixtures to go on there to hold things, just to drill out a bunch of portholes, or, you know, whenever I want to, you know, drill something. Like, I, I do a lot of 3D printing parts, like, um, like these walls and stuff here. Um, I need to drill some screws, drill and tap some set screws on some of these for locking them together. So, you know, this will be nice to pop all my holes. You know, I have a edge here that um, the base layer that I printed, you know, I put that on there, sand that off. It's going to be nice and square. It's going to take that lip off and it's going to work out great for that. You can also use the mill to mill slots. Um, I did design them to slot together, but when they printed, they're a little bit on the insert side, like this side right here where they would slide into. They're, um, they're a little tight so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to you know put them in there run an end mill in there and clean it up a little bit and make it uh, just a little bit cleaner in there because it's not the wedge part it's this width part here that has given me the issues because this one I cleaned out a little bit and it seems to work a little bit better Sa tried sanding this down but it's this it's this width here you can see it's kind of flared out a little bit. It's hard to see. I'll try to put it on this camera and show you. It's a little flared out there. See how it's flared out? It's a little flared. It needs to be more square. So I'm just going to open up this channel here where it's, it's actually rubbing on to um, do that. I'm going to use the mill for that. I don't have a lot of these pieces. So I'm going to build. I'm going to use my plastic pellets to make a custom fixture, square it up, and just run a slot just slot it out with the um, slot it out with the mill here so that's going to be project I'm working on also like I said I'm working on my custom sanding sticks to go on on eBay and I'm using these machines for that I have um, this design here it's a wedge design it's five millimeters wide um, I'm having a little issues with tearing of paper so I'm hoping to use the sander to clean some of this up and radius this edge to make it a little softer on the paper. Um, so got a lot of this. Um, need to take off this bottom layer for the uh, from the from the printing. So if it's a little, it's peeling a little bit. So I'll just clean that up. But that's basically these three tools from Proxon. I'm interested in getting their pin sander and also their. Um, their Dremel-like tool with their with their base station where you can adjust the power on it. I'm very happy with these tools. They have they have a good reputation. They seem to be durable. I've only owned them for about three or four months. I've used the mill about 10, 15 times. I've used the drill press once. I said I haven't used the sander yet, but it's better than it's got to be better than the crappy sanders I've had before that. So I'm interested in using that. I'm not doing anything heavy working but some plastic or some resin, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, like I said, the Speed Tiger end mills are not the greatest in the world, but if you're just doing plastic, doing some hobby modeling stuff, doing some resin or things like that, they're going to be fine. Uh, they're good lower price range, but a little bit better quality. Um, I'm used to higher end tools from a machine shop. So I do have some, but I didn't want to show those because they're harder to get. You normally have to go through like a tool manufacturer like Iskar or um, AFI or something like that to get um, GAR, Helicoil, or even Iskar. So 
that's going to do it for uh, this episode of um, Model Monday. I just wanted to start out with talking about these tools. We're going to be talking about how I use these in later episodes in models. We're also going to be starting airing some episodes on Mondays. Currently, Model Mondays is going to be Mondays only. I'll be doing some modeling stuff. There'll be some game content for the rest of the week. And as I build up extra videos, I will be releasing more and more per week. So I'm trying to get back to it full time. There were some issues with a sponsor I had picked up that was based out of China. And they had closed down and there were some issues with that. I resolved those issues and I'm hoping that there's not going to be any kind of legal problems by me doing this but we're going to move on anyways. I'm sick of not showing model content. I want to start showing it. I want to give you guys what you want to see. So that's going to do it for this. You can visit me on these social media links and you can also visit my Patreon page to support the channel. I have some gaming stuff up there. I also have some tool reviews that are there so you can check that out. Any help would be appreciated. I know it's rough out there this time um, right now so I hope everyone is safe and everyone is taking care of themselves and remember stay six feet apart people. Have a great day.